Hello tacticians, it's Nox here and today we're going to be covering the brand new Guild War which has just started. But before I get into that, I just want to do my usual thank yous and today they go to Fafhard, Balto13, Rain, Magic Pony, Xeros and Player6796. All of you have used my friend code and it is very much appreciated as it really does help me keep on top of things. So now Let's take a deeper look at what we can see with the Guild War. The first screen you'll see is this wonderful looking screen. And if you see the not participating sign, you need to make sure your Guild Leader clicks on it. And they will need to choose which level of Guild War they wish to enter. For level five, you will need to have at least a Guild level of 12 and 20 of your members enlisted. At the other end of the scale, Battlefield 1, you only need a guild level of 4 with 10 members enlisted. In both cases, they have the same number of territories to take over. For each Battlefield level, there is a reward, a multiplier, and it shows you how many guilds that have actually chosen to participate at that level. The reward here, 600 war credits, will only be paid out to the winner. The multiplier is the sum of all points made during the war and any potential bonuses, which are then multiplied up, buying in this case three, which then gets taken and added to your leaderboard score. So the real choice for your guild leaders here is to choose which one is going to be appropriate for your guild to take part in. After all, it may be better to get a multiplier of two and clear the enemy than it would to have a multiplier of three and only get through the first couple of sectors. Also, as the guild leader, say you choose one battlefield, you can still change it to a different battlefield later on. Once a battlefield level has been chosen, it will show on that initial screen, where you can then go to prepare your defences. The number of defences you require depends on the level you have chosen. So I've got a little infographic here to help you decide what level you may wish to go for. Now, bear in mind that each location you need two players to defend. So for a HQ, even though there is only one zone, you will still need two players to defend it. And for level five, that means up to 10 legendary teams. Conversely, if you're at level one, obviously no legendary teams will be on the battlefield, but you can still place up to one epic team per person, per zone. You can easily see which zones are claimed at a glance, and you can easily claim your own by clicking on one and choosing Enlist. This then tells you you can choose up to 25 characters of your collection to form five defence lineups. Each character can only be used in one lineup. For each lineup, your guild's chosen battlefield level defines a maximum rarity, which we've just talked about, that all defenders and attackers will be capped at during the battle. And the panel border of each lineup shows a maximum rarity at a glance. So what we see here is the default that is used if no one places anything are these initiates who are not really going to put up much of a defence. All that you need to do is choose and click continue. Now these can be changed at any point, up to the point of the war beginning. So I'm obviously not going to leave it like this. You can then click on save and it'll take you to a confirmation screen where it says when the war starts, your guild will be matched against a suitable opponent based on the selected battlefield level and your guild's power and success. It will then take us back out to the war zone and show which one I am in. Now, as a guild leader, I am able to edit the war zones and by clicking on any two zones, I can make them switch position. By using this, we can change the layout. And this is of importance because some areas give an active buff to those surrounding them. Let us take the artillery position. It tells us in the centre that it is the source buff for artillery support and what that actually does. And it tells us that the buff applies to this zone and all adjacent zones around it until it is destroyed. The same is true for the anti-air battery. And this, at the start of the battle, will 
hit all attacking flying units, reducing the hit unit's current health by 40%. It is important to note that this will not be able to kill a character, but it will keep reducing their health by 40%. And there is one special zone that gives a global buff to all defending units in all zones. This Medicaid station will mean all defending units have 60% increased health. So your enemies are not going to be as easy to take care of as they are in the normal arena. And again, this applies up until it is destroyed. So one way of obviously trying to make your life a bit easier is try and find this Medicaid station, destroy it, and all of a sudden, all that extra health will disappear. The Medicaid station is only worth an additional 12,000 points, whereas the headquarters is worth 40,000. And indeed, every position has a slightly different number of points assigned to it. So positioning of your zones in itself will start to become part of the game to make it harder for your enemy to defeat you. Do you leave your headquarters where it is? Do you move it to another position? Do you move your fortified position to another location? The only thing to be aware of here is your front lines cannot be moved at all. One last thing that a guild leader can do, or indeed an officer within the guild, I believe, is swap a player. So I can choose myself, swap him, and put myself in the headquarters to defend there instead. What are we doing these wars for? Well, of course, it's the rewards. And everyone will get some rewards. The first place guild will get a whopping 10,000 gold, 9,000 guild war credits, and a requisition scroll. However, those who position more than 10,000 will only get 3,000 credits, 2,500 guild war credits, and still they'll get that requisition scroll. So what can we buy with these guild war credits? Well, having a look at what's in there at the moment, we can see that Ulf is currently in there, along with Nauseous Rotbone, a much needed character for legendary events, and Morgan Ra. There's also two slots for legendary upgrades at a probably fairly decent price. Now the question is, what is the full range of characters available? Is this going to be all characters, or is this only going to be a select few? And that's something we're all going to have to keep an eye out for. Personally, I think this could probably do with another one or two lines of offers just to give us more access to what is available in the shop. And coming back to the main screen, there is this icon up here, which is the war status, which says is coming soon. And this will be a very helpful screen for guild leaders because it will tell us who's enlisted, what activity they've done and the archive. At the moment, it doesn't seem it's working at all because, of course, enlisted is not working. But Hopefully, that'll be something coming very soon. And for those of you who've stuck around to the very end, if you go to tacticusgame.com, there is a Gleam competition. If you go all the way down to Creator Codes, you can enter in my code of Claim Skulls to get five extra entries into the raffle. Good luck! If you like these videos, then it would be much appreciated if you at least think about using my friend code, as it really does help me out. Or if you or your guilds are looking for a new home, please reach out to any of the guilds shown, as we'll always welcome new people into our midst. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you on the battlefield.